What's up, Calvert Gang? Welcome back to Sim Dynamics. So let's solve this problem. So we have a motor, and it's exerting a force that's in terms of position on this cable. And then, so we know that this crate is starting at rest, and we're raising it up with this motor that's pulling the, uh, that cable back. So our goal is to find the speed of that uh, cable, or of the crate, uh, when the crate is equal to 15 meters high. So let's solve for that. So we, if we look at our image here, which is probably over there, or are you looking at this? We have this pulley that goes over this pulley that's holding the crate. So the crate is going to move at half the speed that the motor is pulling. Uh, we learned this in a previous unit. I could run through the whole thing, but it's pretty easy just to tell from intuition. So we can label that that the V of the crate, velocity of the crate, is half the velocity of the motor. So this is going to come in uh, useful later. So what equation are we going to use? Well, we're in chapter 14, so we're using work and energy and all sorts of stuff. So the equation is the sum of that energy is at the initial, T1 plus the sum of the changes in energy from 1 to 2, which is going to be from S is equal to 0 to S is equal to 15, as equal to the final energies, right? So let's run through each one of these. So we know that the crate starts at rest, uh, useful to know. So that means if the crate starts at rest, we don't really have any energy at the initial. We're starting at our bottom position, so it's not even gravitational. So we can set that equal to 0. So what's our change in energy, right? Well, the motor inputs energy, so we can say that the motor inputs some energy, so this is going to be U of the motor. So that's however much energy input the motor puts in. So then what's our final energy? Well, we're going to have gravitational potential energy, right? We're raising 15 meters, so that crate's going to have potential energy. That's sort of gravitational. And then, of course, it's going to be moving at some velocity, so it's also going to have kinetic energy. Okay. So then one more thing. So... Looking at this equation, well, the motor, right, the motor is pulling twice as much as the crate's moving. So that means that the motor is going to do twice as much work as the result seen, so we need to put a 2 here, because we said that the velocity of the crate is half that of the velocity of the motor. So we're going to need to put a 2 there. Okay, so then let's expand this equation, so this 2 is going to stay up front. So the, the input of force, or the, the energy input from force, is just going to be force times that distance. So we know that the distance is going to be that 15 meters. Uh, and then gravitational potential energy, mass gravity height, plus kinetic energy, one half mass velocity squared. So we're solving for velocity, so that's what we want to find. So let's expand this part more, right? Well, we know what force is equal to in terms of S. So we can label this 2. And so that's going to be 600 plus 2S squared. And then we have distance, right? But we're taking an infinitesimal, right? We have an S in this equation, so we're going to need to do some sort of integration to find the total force it applies over that distance. So instead of using distance, we're going to use ds, change in position. So now we have this here, and what we're going to want to do is integrate this. All right, so let's, let me get rid of this, don't need that. We're going to want to integrate this from the position of starting at 0 and going to 15 meters. So this is going to be the left side of our equation. Of course, mass, gravity, height plus one-half mass velocity squared stays over there. So if you integrate this, it's pretty. It's a really simple integral, so I'm not even going to solve it. Oh, no, I am going to solve it. Why not? It's going to become 600s plus two-thirds s to the third from 0 to 15. Is equal to, so let's plug in the numbers we know over here, 100 kilograms, 9.81. Height is 15 meters. That's the height we change to. And that's going to be one half. Mass is 100, and then velocity final squared. That's what we're solving for. So yeah, if you plug all this in, you're going to get some numbers. So let me plug in those numbers. So this part is going to become 200 or 22,500, right? This part I'm going to subtract it over. This becomes 1,000 or 14,715, and then this becomes 500. It does not become 500b. Maybe it does. I don't know. Why did I put 500 here? I probably have a reason for that, right? Why do you think I have to five put it here? Hmm. Mass velocity squared. I don't know. I think it's supposed to be a 50. Oh, it is a 50. 15 the final squared. Right, so now we know how to solve this. Just subtract, divide by 50, take the square root. You get velocity is equal to 12.5 meters a second. And there we go. So we solved the problem. So yeah, not too tricky, but the hardest part is basically, you know, relating all of this energies and making sure not to get lost in the sauce, as they would say. So yeah, uh, any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Check out my playlist, check out anything else I have advertised, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thanks for the support.